Uh, okay, everyone, um, let's start. Uh, I'm Peter Xu, and I work for Red Hat as a virtualization engineer. And today, the session is about huge TRP and unification efforts that can come in the future. So uh, to start with this, um, oh, by the way, thanks for having a one hour session. I, I'm not sure whether I can fully use of it or we, we can just see. So uh, as a summary, I want to just emphasize on the go and non-go of this. And uh, this is only my answer of, answer of this question. It may not be actually right. And uh, I want to know um, how, how you think about this before uh, we spend more effort into it. So the goal of it is to consolidate huge TRB as a plan to unify. Uh, there are some actually code paths that is pretty special in huge TRB. And I'm not talking about uh, the the if VMA checks, if huge TRB do something, it's not only about that. It's about major code paths that is uh, drastically duplicated in some way. And uh, as far as I observe, that is mostly about uh, page table management. Because huge TRB do have a lot of specialties in other areas. Actually, I think it's a kind of file system that supports a lot of, lot, lot of features that uh, only has its own with reasons. So uh, I think the plan is just to list it here, and we have more information later, that uh, there will be uh, 11 such code paths that I observe. I can miss some, so uh, it would be great if people point that out in the future. And that the goal is to reduce it to two or three. Um, and uh, I will have some, I will try to list, especially the two paths that I think may not be appropriate to merge with reasons later. And I added one more, just in case I overlooked something. I could overlook something, I mean, um, and some of them can be very, very challenging. I don't know, so I don't know what the outcome will look like. And actually, maybe last year, I wasn't even considering working on this. As we know, it's kind of a dirty work, but I, I figured it, it could be something we want. So, uh, so I, I just tried to do something. Uh, and the, the non goal is definitely not not to make, I'm not trying to make huge a generic file system. It's not generic at all. It's very special. And uh, even if, if possible, I think well, when I say possible, I mean uh, we have 11 code paths, right? Let's say we have those code paths that are special. We can try to still merge it. We can provide a fault handler. Uh, but uh, if it will, the trade off could be that we pay for some extra complexity for the fault generosity just to support this single function, I, I don't think it, it would be worthwhile. And uh, people, when people look at the final outcome, it, it could be nonsense, right? Uh, maybe we should just keep that alone. And I also have reasonings uh, in one of the slides just to showcase the fault pass uh, and why it could be slightly involved. OK, uh, I, I don't think this page is necessary, but just to make sure we uh, start from a base that on um, what is your TRBFS and why it's special, I was trying to ask myself on trying to list uh, three keywords for that. Firstly, it's RAM-based, definitely, for sure, because we only have two of them, and uh, even Shamam supports swap out. So I think QTRB is the only one that is a pure RAM-based so far. Maybe I, 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 I miss some other things that I don't know, but so far, I think that's the only one. And it's pretty ancient. I, I, I say that uh, because I really think there are a lot of complexity of QTRB just because it's so ancient. And probably one reason is that uh, it is so ancient because we then we don't dare to touch the code at all. We are worried about breaking someone. And uh, the other side of agent is about we used to have some use case. Maybe I, I don't know, re really know because I I'm new. I'm kind of new. Comparing to huge TRB, I, I'm kind of new, working in even Linux. Um, but I mean. We could have some use case, for example, on map private on huge TRB, but does that even exist anymore? I don't know. Maybe we still have that. So, um, so that's the size of uh, Asian thing. And uh, insurance is. I, I, I'm not a native native speaker. I I don't really know this word whether it's accurate, but I hope everybody knows what I mean. I mean the huge TRB, the major benefit or say. 
guarantees. I okay. I I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, actually, I started with guarantees, but I changed it to endurance because I feel like it's not. Anyway, I, I think everybody knows what I'm saying. On the, it guarantees something, right? And and it's good and it's uh, it's uh, bad in some other way. For example, it loses something like swap and. But it's kind of a trade-off between uh, just to have a, um, some re memory reserve, totally reserved out of the kernel management, or comparing to where uh, as a anonymous page or just a generic page cache that is fully managed. So it's kind of a middle ground. That is uh, something good to have. And then we have the dil dilemma. dilemma that uh, uh, we do have this concern on the maintainers. Maintainers over the years, and it actually, uh, as I mentioned, we do have those special code paths, and and it's, uh, I, I think uh, every time I look into it, uh, it confuses me, and uh, I feel like many people can have the same uh, feeling when we look at the code. Uh, initially, I think uh, it is because of good reasonings, and then, I, I start to question that um, a little bit. <laughs> and then the complexity accumulates, as we just mentioned, regarding to its ancient property, so that uh, um, if we think something needs to be cleaned up, we'd better do it sooner than later. And that is also the, I, I think it's, it's fair. People, when we have that uh, innocent victim that I mentioned here, um, we have some good new features proposed for huge TRB and we decided not to accept it because we see that there is a potential risk of more complexities, uh, which is actually exactly what is the accumulation problem. So hopefully what we do is uh, we should do something. Basically we should do something right now or um, by someone. Uh, and uh, what uh, drives me to this, uh, to do this, uh, let's say, dirty work is because I, I, I even saw that some of the subsystems, uh, also from Linux, that uh, can actually propose things that can try to work around this. Uh, I, I think it's the details, I have a reference here uh, regarding to that. I don't think it, the detail matters, and I don't really think this is the only reason that uh, any sub-module wants to propose something just to work around this for the module's specific uh, solution purpose, in this case, a virtual machine, but uh, it can be something else. However, we do have, I mean, uh, I, what I want to do is to make sure it is discussed with technical reasonings, and I want to have a fair comparison between the proposals so that even if a module has a standalone solution. I, I, I hope it's a judgment after all the technical things, not about, okay, we tried to push something to MM and uh, it got rejected and somebody throw us something like an Asian task and nobody knows how to answer that question. So I think that is, uh, that is uh, something that I want to try to improve. I, I don't know whether this is an answer good enough for the community and uh, so that's why we have this. So I think uh, we are pretty clear on why we want to do this, even though um, there can be multiple ben benefits, or actually there can be some risks as well, like performance impacts. I have something later on regarding to a generic page table worker, which can have some performance impact. But uh, obviously, we are still not clear on what and how. And I think it's stronger, basically, when the large folio, we have a lot of work, ongoing work on large folio, on the batching especially, on continuous PTEs. So far, it's still less than PMD, but it already helps huge TRB in many cases where the huge TRB page is just a continuous PTE entry, and it applies to many architectures already, which supports, uh, I think, before the large folio thing. Basically, uh, it would be nice if in the core MM, some of the code paths, when we look at some page table, we know that it's a continuous page table entry, no matter whether it's a huge TRB entry or a large folio can be dynamically allocated. So that will benefit. Uh, basically, these are some more code potentially to be shared with huge TRB, and uh, maybe we can already move some of the huge TRB con 
continuous PT things over as a generic API. And do, I think uh, there are some more we can discuss in this area. Uh, any comments? Please interrupt me anytime if there's no comments. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, so, uh, I, I pre prepared this slide just to, because this is a very popular idea, I think, since last year, that uh, whether we can have a huge TLB version 2 and just to get rid of everything. I think it's a fancy idea. Uh, I, I wished somebody already proposed a patch and get merged, um, but so far not yet. It, it could be uh, because many reasons. People are busy with things, and it could be that uh, it could be just a little bit risky to do this, and with uh, and whether we are having the good reasons for that. So I was trying to answer this, and uh, I was thinking that uh, I think the good <clears throat> because I don't really know, for example, C group. The history of C group. I didn't spend time looking into that, and and I wasn't uh, aware of that details as well. But what I'm seeing this is, I think we need, we really need uh, some new, uh, a new version of HTTP only if we want to break the ABI heavily in some way. So what I worry is we are mixing things up with ugly ABI versus ugly code. So. What I see is uh, we have a concern, and the concern is about the ladder, which is the ugly code. It is a pain to clean ugly code, but it could be um, another kind of pain if we just introduce version 2 to fix ugly ABI, even though that is that may or may not be our concern. Uh, I mean, it is definitely ugly ABI, no, no question asked. Uh, I was wondering, I mean, one of the issues that I think UGTLB introduces is that you have these is like VMA UGTLB all over the place, which is mostly due to our alignment requirements, for example, that you say, well, I can only map like a full UGTLB folio, so I can only map, for example, one gigabyte UGTLB folio completely, which then also means that like if you, if you add like these uh, high granularity mappings, it's weird, right? Everywhere you say I can only map the whole thing, and then you add HGM on top of it that does something something different. So I'm wondering, like may maybe like calling it a UGTLB v2 is a little bit extreme, but for example, having some way to toggle for UGTLB or for a specific file that you say, well, the old UGTLB or like restrictions don't apply anymore. Like you you could map half of a one gig UGTLB folio, and that would then just work. As expected, you would still have like the, the weird reservation in the background and all of that beautiful code. But I think that like the the, the, the arbitrary restrictions we added to UGTLB from an MAP point of view and MProtect and all of that, I think that is certainly ugly ABI in my point of view and not ugly code. Right. I think I agree with you. Regarding to the ABI, I think it's right. But let me ask this question. Um, <clears throat> Did we reject the last year HGM proposal just because we can't uh, partially map a huge RV? I think to some degree, my strong feelings against were more it you don't allow it anywhere, and then you have HGM that does something special. Like you, you don't allow, allow a partial M map, you don't allow a partial M protect, but then you have like a HGM which should that just does something different there. It's inconsistent. I think like if we want to do it right, we should try to drop these ancient restrictions to the ABI. And dropping them might be that you need like a V2, which is just like a flag that says, well, it's no longer that special. We cannot partially map a, map a huge TLB folio, for example. And then HGM just comes natural. All your page table walkers come natural, right? Uh, so one thing I see it great with HGM and huge TRB is that huge TRB has those limitations. Like, <coughs> I think, uh, for example, uh, huge TRB already we have the proposal from James, and uh, that works with uh, all these alignment things, even without a knob, right? I think it simplifies things. So, I, I still, I think this is exactly the case where I think we are mixing something up. So I agree with the first one, I agree with the second one, and right now I think it's just that I want to solve the problem on the second one only. It's because that is a major blocker for things like HGM to get merged, 
I think is the major concern. It's not a, it's not something that uh, okay we don't allow a huge TRB page to be mapped partially. Then we don't accept HGM. It's not uh, is irrelevant in this case. In my humble opinion. Yeah, in my opinion, not. Uh, I think like we're trying to add a very special case to something to get one use case solved, which is like use of old FD. And my point would be we should try to just get it right. And if that means that we have to maintain the old world, which is like the V1, great. And you can do the unification and all of that. But let's not fake that we can partially map something where we didn't allow partial mappings and partial mappings don't make sense. That, that's my point of view. So if we want to add this knob, we need to have a user enabling it. Who is going to enable it? I mean, if we have a parameter or say, that's exactly what we do. We introduce mount options, we introduce this control, we introduce these things, we turn it on, a new feature pops up, like a C group, we just evolve these C group things on huge TRB. Who is going to pop this? I think that is the question. I, Our, I mean, like, if, if you want to use it for your VM use case, then whoever sets up that hypervisor has to enable it for your HTLB. What, what's the issue there? I mean, I want a new feature, so I'm going to enable that I now get the, the, the clean, non ancient HTLB version. I, which I, reuses a lot of code under the hood. It's just like that we don't add arbitrary special cases to something that, that just doesn't feel right to fit into that model. So again, my question is, uh, are these two problems or one problem? I think like one, one implies the other. Mm. Okay, Ma Michael? I would just step back for a while. Can you uh, summarize what kind of features from the huge TLBFS as it's now you really need? Or uh, it, it's not really clear to me, uh, uh, as you said, huge TLBFS is old because we didn't have transparent huge pages back then. Uh, why do we really need to build new, feature, new features into huge TLBFS these days rather than exploit transparent huge pages much more? I assume in your case for the virtualization use case. I I just don't know. I mean, there are performance implications with THP at least so far on the not, and uh, I think that's also why real time doesn't use it, right? I mean, there is, uh, consider somebody runs Sapana and they are not even, um, they are not accepting two mega because it's too slow. And they only need one gig, and that's why. I mean, if if with two mega, we are all already fine. Per, per probably with uh, the VM use case on migration, that is okay, kind of okay. But uh, one gig is no go, and they are exactly ask for asking for the no go. Okay, so uh, what you're saying is that uh, Bob, probably the most interesting part of the huge TLBFS right now for you is gigabyte pages that we do not have by any other means. Yeah, I think that's one reason. I think that's one reason, yes. And I, I would be more than happy if somebody can propose something based on THP. I'm not sure, um, because I haven't looked into more um, proposals coming. I mean, I would be happy if somebody can propose something that works for the use case, for sure, if without huge Um I. I just wanted to add a little bit of the, I don't know, motivation or, or who's who's using what case because I was poking around um, testing out Ryan's uh, M MTHP for, for quite a while. And what I found, uh, because we have all these AI applica applications and a bunch of them want huge pages. And so there's, it started to group out, okay, which ones have a working set that benefits from huge pages? So now we're down to a lot of them. Uh, and then which ones, desperately need huge pages right now and can't wait, uh, and those, those ones pick huge TLBFS. And then which ones um, didn't, uh, well, were written before MTHP came out, which is like everybody, <laughs> and, and can benefit from huge pages. Those ones you can slide in a kernel that has MTHP enabled, and all of a sudden they get faster. The, the other ones were coded to use huge, huge TLBFS, and they don't really want to change their code now, and they work great and they've already tuned it to their working size, and so they don't really want to change. So I'm kind of starting to suspect that there's some applications out there that you know, one, once they figure out the tuning, 
and and they've gotten that super high performance where they you never have to wait for a huge page to get collapsed into a huge page. Or I, I always get the verbiage mixed up, but turned into a huge page. I'm starting to suspect that forever there's going to be a group of applications that benefit from that carved out, always available, huge, huge page. And I think it needs to live alongside THP. This is just from poking around from all those apps. So hope that helps. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely the case. Diff different apps are looking for different things, right? So some apps are wanting the, the one gigabyte. Uh, some are wanting the intermediate page sizes that ARM provides, and I think Power PC as well. Um, some are looking for the reserved, so the you're, you are guaranteed to get it. You're guaranteed to get it or guaranteed to fail. Right? It, 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 the, it's never, oh, I'm going to delay arbitrarily long in order, to, in order for the page allocator to finally put a two megabyte page back together. Um, there was another feature. Now I've forgotten it. Um, non, yeah, not non non fragmentable, non reclaimable. The, 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 I think each of the features in huge TLBFS is still in use. Oh, the other the other big one, of course, page table sharing. But that's a topic for later, right, Harlan? <laughs> so, 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 so we'll get we'll get back to the page table sharing part in in a bit. But um, yeah, I, I I don't think there is any feature that huge TLBFS currently has that nobody is using and that we could get rid of in a huge TLBFS huge TLBFS v two. Is there um, a okay, can anybody? Yep. Oh, you 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 guys can hear me. Sorry. This is Frank. I, I, I raised my hand and I, I figured somebody was watching it, but that's okay. Just speak up. So yeah, so I, I just wanted to agree with the fact that what most people like, at least the people that we talk to, this may be somewhat specific to our use case. We use it as like backing for VMs and things like that, is the, the guaranteed contiguous physical memory part. Like, like you get a one gig range, especially the larger size physical memory that can be mapped efficiently. Now others may want the physically contiguous part, but not necessarily the efficient mapping. They may want to want, uh, map it partially or change the mapping. Um, so that is definitely, that's why I hope that eventually we get to a somewhat stricter line, a clearer defined ABI between the physical memory pooling part and the other part of huge TLBFS that would be, for example, if you look at KVM, like with guest MFD, if you look at that, I think that, well, maybe what they would want is something to back their guest MFD, but they just want the physical pooling part of, uh, out of which they can get uh, physically contiguous one gate pages. I think they would love that, but they don't want the whole mapping part. In fact, often they don't want the page to be mapped at all and only a small part of it, if, if at all. So I think that might be an interesting outcome. And I, I think also for the huge GBFS part, I think, yeah, like uh, Otto said, the, the guaranteed allocation is one benefit because for THP, they always take long latency to get that. So even I, I used to, uh, I had an implementation for one gigabyte PHP. I think the objection uh, before is just like, it will take a long time to allocate and do this fragmentation. All these are not ready there yet. And uh, my take on the HGM addition to the QGLBFS is it seems getting, trying to mimic what uh, THP does, but it's uh, adding, making a huge Chevy less special, but using the uh, 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 less special and uh, it's trying to mimic what core MM does. So it's just like making, adding more common case in the huge LBFS, it seems more replicated code in the core MM. Probably it's better to just uh, supporting one gigabyte folio instead of the transparent huge page part. And in the core MM probably, and also adding adding the guaranteed one uh, page allocation part also to the core MM as the feature, that probably is better than keep adding uh, new features to the huge CLBFS part. 
Jason? Oh, okay. Uh, Jason, maybe you want to start? <laughs> I, I was just going to say, I think, I think this is kind of the right sort of discussion here because you're kind of asking the question of what's the goal of all the cleanup work? Like, when's the end goal when you say it's exactly. cleaned up enough? And at least, like, I, I think I raised this last year as during the HGM session. Um, my feeling was I wanted to see like the core MM outside of huge tlbfs.c not have any like if huge tlbfs special code, right? If we can get to that point, then at least from my perspective, I care a lot less about what kind of insanity is in huge tlbfs.c. Um, and it makes the question of like, what is a THP? What's the difference between a THP and a huge tlbfs? It makes that question kind of immaterial because the, the only real difference is then where did it come from in the first place? Like what was the allocation path? And if you have your special allocator and your pool, that's great, that's fine. And if you do reclaim and you build it up, that's also, that's great, that's fine. But all the code should handle all of this the same, you know, for all the page sizes that we want. We shouldn't have the special cases. And David's special case about mprotect and mmap, that shouldn't be in the core code, right? That should be a file system delegation. And I think we have other users that would like to have alignment needs when they're doing weird things, like VFIO, for instance, would really like to have alignment needs so that it can map in its one gig MMIO region that's kind of like a huge TLBFS, but isn't, <laughs> right? It doesn't have a struct page, doesn't have a folio. Um, so I, I don't know, that, that's kind of my feeling. Yeah, I think to add a uh, point to uh, Jason's point, I think the fundamental difference between, the, the other fundamental difference between QTLB and uh, transparent hue page is that QTLB is an unsplitable, but uh, THP is splitable. And there are a lot of uh, paths in kernel that we can split THP into uh, small patches. And uh, another uh, feature supported by QTLB, but not for huge page, is that HVO. I think QTLB VMAP optimization, uh, with that feature we can uh, remove the the most memory consumed by strut page for HTLB. And it's a big save for, for memory, but we can also power that for transparent HTLB page yet. That seems like something that just hasn't been implemented, or uh, that's my understanding. That's where uh, Matthew is heading uh, in the future. So uh, I, I don't think this is a fundamental difference. Right. I, I agree with you. It's not a fundamental difference. There, there, there are definitely some challenges to implementing that. I don't know how surmountable those challenges are. It hasn't been a high priority. I, um, but just, just to go back to Jason's point about things outside huge TLBFS shouldn't have to care about huge TLB. I think our biggest challenge is actually the page table walker. Um, and I've, I've expressed this opinion on the mailing list a couple of times now. That what, because when, when, when you fill in your huge TLB, when you fill in your page table walker, you have separate functions to call for huge TLB and for normal pages. And it's like, what? Why? This is stupid. We, we need to fix this first. I think Peter's going to talk about this very, very shortly. But I agree with what Matthew said. Uh, the most important thing is unifying the page table walking parts. Maybe we don't get HGM automatically, although that's what I would like to see. Um, but I if you unify the, the page table walking, then we get most of the simplification that we're really looking for. Maybe we don't get HVO, but we don't need to get HVO for THPs. Uh, I, I think we have a talk, actually, tomorrow, perhaps, from Yu Zhao. I think there is a session regarding to uh, uh, the, the memmap optimization of THP. And I, I think uh, I get the point regarding to the one gig locator, just a one more extra abstraction layer so that we can just allocate one gig freedomly, perhaps. I think also, I, I'm looking forward personally to uh, tomorrow's session from you, maybe. I, I didn't got time to look into that yet, but uh, hopefully I'll start tomorrow. So. Um, in summary, I think I collected, uh, by the way, thanks for all the comments, and uh, I think I collected some information. One thing I want to say, I think some, some of the comment, one of the comment I want to just address first is uh, there are still comments uh, worrying about adding more complexity, and HDM seems to be adding more things similar, and that is exactly what this is for. So I hope that one can be more or less addressed if this can work, but if this won't work, of course, that is another story. So hopefully you can discuss version two without that concern, without uh, HTM adding more complicated uh, duplicate code, let's imagine it's, it's gone. Okay. And uh, I think it makes sense to have a separate allocator. I, I fully agree. I think uh, 
Um, but of course, uh, if we are saying that uh, we are not going to support something like HGM for this, then I lose kind of my goal to do this. <laughs> so um, so um, let's see how it goes. Uh, but I mean, just to stress again, I think if we get it right, HGM would be just come natural. That means like if all page table walkers, for example, can do the right thing and also, I think Matthew once talked about that, that we have like this uh, page walk and then we have the huge TLB special one, which is for example used using uh, SMAPs and SMAPs rollups and it all gets weird if you say like, I only have like one thing, but then I don't have the full thing. Like if, if I think if we manage to clean that up to the most degree, then most page table walkers will not care if something is partially mapped or not, or if it's fully mapped. And then I agree with Jason, then it's maybe it's like a restriction that we right now have, for example, in MMAP code for UHDLB that we say in version one, we only allow like mapping the whole thing, but that doesn't mean that there couldn't be something partially mapped in there, for example. And I think that will then just like from the unifications, if you fix the page table walkers, you can do it in your in your fault handler, whatever you want, essentially, if like the core MM and everything around that just knows, yeah, well, there cannot be something partially mapped. I, I think that, that that is actually good for you. <laughs> uh, so I'm I'm not sure I, I fully uh, get this so far. I mean, uh, I I still hope that uh, the partial map thing can be. I really appreciate that, that actually the simplicity so far that HTRB provides. I want to somehow keep it, but uh, only if we want to move forward with. Uh, HDM or whatever things. I hope some real user that will leverage partial mapping should introduce this. I'm not against it totally. It's really about I don't see a use case so far for me. For us, uh, well, we, we don't really need the uh, misalignment on the boundaries, right? Yeah, we, partial mapping is just like partial mapping. Partial mapping, that's exactly why I want, I want to say that maybe it's just easier to do that in HGM. Uh, in huge TRB because of like the map count, we just simply take one map count no matter how many small pages are mapped, we just take one. So maybe you are right that map count is just a separate. And the, that's, that is your goal on the dropping the per page map count as well. Basically that is going to this way. So it's kind of nice if we can simply take one map count, no matter how many is mapped, basically it's a count of how many BMM maps this. and. Uh, and uh, no matter huge or small, we already can do that in uh, huge HRB. And uh, the fact is, we cannot split it, as Young rightfully pointed out. Huge HRB have this kind of feature lost and also benefit in the meantime, basically. So may maybe just for different use cases and purposes. And I agree with that. Uh, yeah, maybe we can wait and see how it goes with one gig allocate allocator. Mm, but then we will still need some interface to consume that if we want version 2 and uh, okay let me see 40 minutes it's on slide uh, five, kind Peter, of uh, can I inject a thought like um, we talked about version 2 but like I see a lot of the KVM ecosystem moving to MemFD and secret MemFD and all these other sort of MemFD related approaches yeah. Like, is that really version two? Like, do we just want to teach MemFD a way to reach into a huge TLBFS and use its allocation pool? Like, is that what people actually really want? I don't know. I, I, I guess, uh, guess MemFD is just uh, so special. It will need something like a one gig allocator, I guess. But I don't want to see, like, all kinds of one gig allocators in the kernel. Like, there should be one reservation of one gig pre-reserved pages, and right, everybody should be able to reach into it. Right, right. Maybe exactly. Maybe CMA will work for that, would it? I, I, I mean, using UHTLB would, would be easier. And the, the, the issue with guest MFD is that they want everything, but they don't really, really know how, for example, they now want to be able to map guest MFD to user space, and they want to support UHTLB, and they want to support partial UHTLB mappings, because it could be that, for example, you have a UHTLB page, and part of it is private to the guests and 
should not be mapped to user space and the other part is shared and should be mapped so you run into similar issues that you have like partial mappings of huge DLB pages. However, they want to map that and how they want to track that, that's a different discussion. But they, are, they also showed interest in in high granularity mappings, however you want to call that at that point. So I think that that's another use case that would be interesting if we're going down the huge to be path. And I think we should be doing, we shouldn't have like 10 reservation mechanisms just to get like a huge to be page pre-allocated somewhere. Yeah, I mean, I, I, can, I can say that, 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 that from our side, you know, inside Google, there's definitely a big interest in that part. And that, that, that's why I mentioned it. Yeah. Frank. Yeah, I, I mean, I think there's a lot of merit in separating the, the, the components of huge TLBFS because it's a big blobby thing, right? Like it's got its UAPI, it's got its reservation pools, it's got its SysFS and command line. And like you could easily say the reservation pools and all of those features, that's, that's like a general feature. And if you get, I don't know, some sort of permission to it, you can plug it into some other subsystem, be it MemFD, guest MemFD, or whatever you want. And that, that seems appealing to me, right? Because that's that's at least half of what people have talked about in this room is I want the reservation mechanism, but I don't necessarily want the goofy way that huge TLBFS works. Like it sure would be nice if I have permissions to use huge TLBFS that I could use an MF flag to get it, for instance. Like that would be cool. Uh, but any more comments? Uh, So do you have answer to your question, is this ugly ABI or ugly code? Because I think that's the primary thing that we are discussing here right now. Because yeah. uh, if we are talking about uh, ugly code, then this is just a matter of cleaning up, separating uh, functionality that can be reused. If we are talking about ugly ABI, then we are talking about huge TLBFS version 2, which my understanding is that we would like to avoid. <laughs> because that means that we have two beasts rather than a single one. Um, to me, it all indicates that we are talking about the latter rather than the former. Do you, I, I think, it, it, yeah. are we on the same page with this, or uh, can? <laughs> what I feel like, let me try to answer this. Um, maybe answer this. That uh, what what I feel like is basically this cleanup is probably definitely on the second one on the ugly code side there, and uh, the ugly API could be that uh, when we want to add HGM again, we worry that uh, it could be an ugly API, but my question is actually HGM does not really add more ugliness into this. So um, I'm not saying that uh, it should be just uh, accepted if we have the second problem solved. Um, and uh, for GMMFD, yes, I think uh, it's, I'm not sure how, James? I, sorry, I didn't want to stop you, but I, I think in, in my mind, we want to do Peter's cleanup no matter what. If we end up with a huge v 2 if we don't do Peter's cleanup, we're going to be just worse off than before. Uh, I think, I, so I think we should at least start with what Peter's doing, and uh, I am not doing my fair share in reviewing and stuff like that, uh, but um, I think down the line, then if we try HGM again, and we find that actually the ABI needs to change and we need a huge shell BV2, we'll at least be better off because the, the, like huge shell BV1 won't be as intrusive as it was before, and huge shell BV2 might be easier to implement, maybe on top of like TempFS, maybe as its own thing, but maybe if we focus now on just the unification you want to do, like this year, that might be easier to go about, and I think it's necessary no matter what. Yeah, thank you for answer, uh, for that, but it's just that uh, uh, somebody needs to help me convey my manager. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I, I'm joking, but uh, really, I, I mean, at least from my, from my point of view, on my side, it will be some kind of a loss of motivation for sure on why I'm doing this, uh, but I mean, I know why I'm doing this, it's just uh, less than what I was looking for, for sure, but um, so is that the answer for for HGM? Yeah. Well, I don't know. If, I don't know. If Rick, can, Rick can come off mute or not, but I'll, I'll read his comment from the chat. He said, "Crazy idea. If we removed if we removed TLBFS and replaced it with F allocate mode for tempfs, what would actually break?" 
The, the structure page rework by Matthew Wilcox should take care of much of the HVO benefits in a more flexible way. Comment from Rick. I, I think the first question is, to answer is uh, how to convey the users move forward, like uh, people re using real five, like, uh, and uh, how do we ask users to move over? And that is definitely a question uh, to me. I think uh, we are throwing some hardness onto, we are throwing some big question to the user, basically, and uh, asking them to make a choice. So one thing I was thinking regarding some of the ugliness on the ABI is, I just now, I, I think I just talked to David Regents on this, um, regarding to what we do in QMU. We have a, a deprecation process of two releases. For example, if we want to deprecate something, we will uh, provide a statement on the list trying to deprecate. For example, we say that uh, we are going to remove this feature for two releases. Currently, that is how it works. And after that, we can remove the feature. And within the two releases, there will be an error or warning dumped when somebody tries to use it. But we expect nobody will trigger that because we, we want to remove useless code. And for this, um, for example, we, we worry about the ugly ABI. May, maybe, for example, on the map private, if we do a map on map private on huge TRB, we dump an error to D message showing that this will be. Uh, hello, hello. We are going to remove the. We are potentially going to remove these in the next uh, what, two or three years. If you are using this, send an email to MM list, for example, like that. Maybe I, I'm not sure. So, just uh, uh, tempfs something version two on tempfs uh, can also work. Maybe this one is less intrusive regarding to the ABI problem. I, I'm not sure whether it will work because I don't see it happening in in the past. But I was thinking something will work like this. If we can trap something in a map system call, or just in case it is, if it's a file, yeah, I think it always needs to be mapped. So I think we can have a single point of track of uh, private users, I think. Some, something like uh, what David said on the PS as change, that is more challenging because we can't dump warnings when some number changes. But this one may apply. I'm not sure whether it would work for Linux. So one thing, I think that gets back to what Jason was saying, like having a single like large page allocation system, instead of adding another one into tempfs, try to reuse the one in HTLB. I don't really know how applicable that is for like adding for adding like huge page like huge TLB functionality with an f allocate thing. Um, but I think the the key thing is to add one gig support into something on top of tempfs, we're probably going to need to do the huge CLB page table walking oh, cleanups yeah. that yeah, yeah. Peter's already doing. Right, so. that, that's like my whole point, right? We can't imagine moving like little pieces of functionality. Like we can't enable one gig pages in tempfs until we've cleaned up the core MM and refactored it so that we can even do that. Right, that's, that's the main point, right? Once you've made the core MM able to do this naturally, where the folio comes from, like if tempfs allocates it from the, the pool or CMA or whatever, doesn't matter so much. It, could, it has all the MM support to stick it in a VMA and make it all work. And if the MM is enhanced so it can do slices of it, then great, right? Then you get your HDM kind of functionality. Like, I don't necessarily envision a huge TLBFS V2 as huge TLBFS or anything like huge TLBFS, but it might be an additional IOCTL and a MemFD kind of thing. Like, here, here I'm a MemFD. Here, you, here's your permission to use the allocator pool. You know, I got an FD, I somehow, here, you get to use it then you can do interesting things in a MemFD. And that kind of frees you from some of the historical baggage. You, you, know, you won't get mShare, but mShare on a MemFD is maybe a Matthew's topic later. I don't know. Always, always. Sorry? Always. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Forgive me. Um, but like, I think breaking it up, it, these big monster things, is probably the right idea. Break them into their components, make their components better, make them reusable, and then somebody will figure out how to remix them into solve their problem. And like, I'm pretty sure the VMM guys don't really want huge TLEFS. They want their guest MemFD. They want their secret MemFD. They want all that technology. They don't want secret MemFD. Well, <laughs> what do I know? It sounded good. <laughs> 
I do agree with that. Uh, but rather than pushing ex uh, current existing users uh, from away from huge DLBFS, which sounds like something for upcoming 15, maybe 20 years, because large databases do not change all that easily. Uh, I would just leave what we have with that. But uh, if we just, as Jason said, clean up and pull those little parts and reuse them in a reasonable way, and more importantly, not only reasonable, but much more customized way that doesn't really need to carry all the baggage, that sounds like the way to go. Uh, I don't. I don't have any particular advice, but I just want to bring up an, another thing I noticed when I was poking around with users that were. They all wanted huge pages, and some of them used huge TLBFS. Uh, they would mount it, and others used tempfs, and I think he used mAdvise after that, or uh, and then others used THP, and then some of them we brought into mthp. And there's a surprising amount of confusion, at least surprising to me, at the user level of what they were doing and what they were getting. Uh, and so it, it struck me that if you started to have, for example, if you had the same effect from using uh, tempfs and huge tlbfs, if you could get the same effect inside the kernel, then the user confusion might be a little better. I, I think that's. Like uh, you're go talking ahead, go specifically ahead. about application users, and I, in my mind, I see kind of a, a world of difference between like I wrote an application and I want it to run faster, versus like I'm writing a VMM and I have these really special needs. I want to manage my system really carefully. Like the, the I want my application to run faster. They want THP to work really well. They want it to have, just work for them. They don't want to think about it, and they don't want to write, you know, weird code to open files and and map huge pages, right? Like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Any more questions or comments? We have 10 minutes, so if you want to move over so that we don't get that locked in the discussion, then. It's really an important question too, because it, uh, maybe the follow up uh, slides will make some sense as well. Um, but I really want to address, because I heard something, I want to say something. Uh, firstly, regarding to the one gigalotator, I think it makes sense. But I, I mean, it's kind of there, right, for a huge TRB. Just for a huge TRB. We have something. We just want to expose some API. And we can do it better, for example, with use uh, Tau. There can be some other solutions to make uh, allocation better. Uh, but that is another story. But for example, if Tau works with uh, allocating one gig stably, it will just work for huge DRB. And my question regarding to um, no matter is a new MemFD, new Octo, huge DRB version 2, no matter what it's called, the interface, the new interface we're looking for, it looks like people were looking for this. And what is the difference? Can anybody help me to identify what is the major difference comparing to version 1 that we need to drop? I think you have it on the slides, and I really discussed map private map handling for huge TLB. And I, th I think that's just like the overall theme that I, I was saying. Like, we added these restrictions. You only can map something in that granularity, which implies that map private is weird, which implies that you have all of these special cases all over the place. So if you would, if you would drop these restrictions and just like have a pre-reserved one gig page and you're going to map it however it suits the user right now, it, it would be a better place. <laughs> what I worry is, it is our willingness. So do we have customers complaining about map private? So we all agree it's ugly and we all want to clean it. Actually, with this, with the hope that it will work, even though I don't know the answer of that, but it can be uh, a lot of the paths can actually be removed uh, in some in some way. So we are. This is in my hope. This is exactly exactly what can make this slightly better. And uh, what I worry is, yes, there is ugly API, but it's only about we as developer looking at the code that we think is an ugly ABI. Users are still using it. Nobody complains. We don't have a report saying that uh, Map Private has this ugly ABI. We want to introduce this no, but to just to switch that. It's because maybe nobody cares. Everybody works 
runs my private map share, you share be everything works perfectly fine and people are just using them. But it's just so ugly and API from design and we are not happy with it. Is it really a good idea that uh, because of developer are not happy with reading this code so that we introduce version two. I, my whole thing regarding to, so look like this part is, is uh, we are clear on this part. We want to do the cleanup and. Uh, so, so, so I, I mean, I was recently having that discussion upstream where people want to add to you probe support for um, lip, like huge TLB FS. So what we have to do if we have like a one gigabyte page and somebody wants to do a ptrace right to it or insert a U probe into the page, you have to allocate one gigabyte huge TLB private. So you duplicate your code. That's not gonna work. You just don't have like arbitrary one gigabyte huge TLB pages lying around so somebody can insert a breakpoint into an executable or set a U probe. It, it, it just doesn't make any sense. And these like, I'm willing to help that request make progress upstream in order to make it as little ugly as possible, but you're going to run into the issue that you just don't have these like arbitrary one gigabyte pages around to keep supporting these weird map private semantics. If we wouldn't have that, you, you would partially map that thing, you would replace a single page and you're good, right? And if you remove that single page again, you could collapse it to the original large folio and it would be a better place. Now, now you can say, is it just me that doesn't like Mac private? I think the whole concept never made sense. We hacked it in, and it's a maintenance burden. For example, now I, I have to rewrite uprobes code in order to be able to support something that most probably will never make sense in real life, because you won't get like one gigabyte anonymous page out of nothing, just insert a uprobe. Mm. So as far as I read the, the huge Sherby code, a little bit more than that uh, before, I, I feel like uh, all, all this complexity, many of this complexity goes back to the endurance thing and guarantees all the pages uh, preserved. And I think people want to have this uh, accounted on reserve a map rather than the page allocations. There are just, James. I was gonna say the map private thing. I know it causes a lot of issues like with UCLB with the reservation counter and stuff, but I don't think it changes too much how the page table walking code is done. And I think that's where the- No, no, uh, absolutely not. It, it yeah. doesn't change the and page I, table. I think we should just do that now. And I, I, I don't think there is any question on what to do. I mean, it is clear that Peter is supposed to do the unifications. And not clear, not yet, not yet, <laughs> not yet, not yet, not yet. So least, uh, at least to me, it's clear that we have to clean up the page table walking code. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping he can convince his manager. And I think we all agree that we have to keep maintaining UGTLB as it is because I mean, there are existing users. And the question is like, where do we go from there? Like once we are there, are we gonna add HGM support to the old version? Do we want something else? Are we gonna reuse the individual bits? But I think it's... If, let's say if we have the new interface, MemFD version two that only drops map private, I would see it really, really, um, I feel sad because I, I think we would also drop the reservation mechanism. And why, why, like why? That. The question did, is did you ever look at the reservation oh, mechanism for for MapPrime? You Prime mean for private yep. reservations? Oh my god! Yeah. So, um, <laughs> I I don't know. Um, I don't know whether it's a, so. To me, I think uh, it's really I I really need more use case to push that forward. I, whatever new interface, I would not initiate that from a developer purely because I, 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 I dare not to do so. So I hope somebody can pick this up, if so. I'm happy to be a user space user. I'm very happy with that without writing any code. So if somebody can help me, but I really, really dare not do this. I don't feel like it's right. I mean, introduce version two or... You start with the unification, what you feel makes sense, and we'll see where we go from there. Because I think like everybody agrees that page table walking code has to be... Uh, so, okay, well, let, oh, how about this? We have... Uh, okay, we don't have time, sorry. Um, so maybe we just... Uh, do we have uh, extra maybe 20, 30 minutes in the next other slots? Or? Sorry about that. I, I think it's just... Uh, it seems like we still have to go through some of the slides just to 
even though I don't know whether, um, I mean, that's another story, but we can talk about that. Um, thank you. <laughs>